Hello everyone, it's Brother Randy with Sour Milk Ministries. Welcome to video 25, Taking on the Trinity, round two. Everybody's a comedian. Now, in all seriousness, before we begin round two, let me briefly go over a few things from round one. First of all, if you haven't watched round one, you really need to. For example, you have no idea what the chicken reference was all about. Had you watched round one, you would understand it. That's because each round will build off of the previous round. Additionally, I define the doctrine of the Trinity in round one. Now that's very important because you need to know what I'm denying. Because unfortunately, the knee-jerk reaction that most people have whenever they encounter anyone challenging the doctrine of the Trinity is to call that person a heretic because they assume that you're trying to deny the divinity of Christ. I am not denying the divinity of Christ. And I made that abundantly clear in the beginning of round one. Nevertheless, that didn't keep me from getting this comment. Okay, yep. I'm out. I serve the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The three co-equal, co-eternal, sovereign one. This person teaching here is indeed a heretic. Unfollow this man. Now, as you see, I obscured the identity of this person. And this was my reply. Maybe you missed the part where I emphatically stated that I was not denying the divinity of Christ. Moreover, it's too bad that you hastily left the fight after the very first round because you might have actually learned something, like how it's the man-made doctrine of the Trinity, which you blindly follow, apparently, that denies Yeshua of his true identity. And indeed it does. Ironically enough, the doctrine of the Trinity, the very doctrine that was supposed to define the divinity of Christ, actually obscures the divinity of Christ. Additionally, it's interesting that this gentleman called me a heretic. The term heretic is subjective. This gentleman has put his faith in a church council, in a church creed that came up with the doctrine of the Trinity. See, I'm straying from that, that creed, that council. So he's calling me a heretic. Well, my standard is not a church council. My standard is not a church creed. My standard is the Word of God. Now, with that being said, I know there's some of you out there who are smarter than the average bear, and you got to chuckle out of that because you're thinking, well, gee, I guess this idiot doesn't know that those church councils gave you the canon of Scripture. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but that's Comparing apples to oranges. We're not talking about the canon of Scripture here. We're talking about the interpretation of Scripture. So those are two different animals. My standard is the Word of God. My standard isn't the early church fathers. So don't quote me church fathers. With all due respect, compared to the Scriptures, I don't care about church fathers. I don't care about church councils. I follow the Word of God. And the Word of God does not teach the doctrine of the Trinity as defined in round one. And I intend to demonstrate that to you in this series. Now, with all that being said and done, it's finally time to break some eggs. I suspect that most people have heard this analogy from their pastor. The Trinity is like an egg. How so? Well, as you see, an egg is made up of three parts. You've got the white or the whites, You've got the shell, and you've got the yolk. Three parts, one egg. Voila, there you go. God is like an egg. It's as simple as that. The only problem is, no, God is not like an egg, because that's not biblical. The Bible does not teach that there are three co-equal and co-eternal persons, and together these persons make up this thing called God. However, if that was the case, then hey, maybe this would be a perfect analogy but it's not the case. Okay, so what's this better analogy that I'm going to give you, the one I spoke of in round one? Well, before I roll the curtain back on that, let me preface my remarks by saying that I believe this analogy is indeed 
the perfect analogy for the Godhead. Now, don't confuse the word Godhead with the Trinity, as unfortunately a lot of people do. When I say Godhead, I am talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Period. I am not talking about three co-equal and co-eternal persons, etc. So again, don't confuse the word Godhead with the doctrine of the Trinity. They are not the same things. Additionally, in spite of the fact that this analogy is the perfect analogy for the Godhead, it's also used by Trinitarians to promote the doctrine of the Trinity. They just put a different spin on it. It's the same analogy, just applied differently. In fact, I suspect a lot of you have already heard this analogy from Trinitarians. It's not quite as popular as the egg analogy, but it's out there. Nevertheless, the ironic part about this analogy being used by Trinitarians is that not only does this analogy not support the doctrine of the Trinity, it defeats the doctrine of the Trinity. Did you catch that? It defeats the doctrine of the Trinity. It's a Trojan horse. Although sticking with our chicken theme, let's call it a Trojan chicken. Okay, it's time to roll back the curtain and reveal the analogy. Then I'm going to show you how it's used by Trinitarians to support the doctrine of the Trinity. So with that, here is the analogy. Water, ice, and steam. Now, if you are familiar with this analogy, don't get discouraged and think that you're not going to hear anything new. I guarantee you that you've probably never heard this analogy explained in the way that I'm going to explain it. So I would encourage you to hang in there and let this play out. So let me begin by showing you how this analogy of water, ice, and steam is used by Trinitarians to promote the doctrine of the Trinity. Just like the egg analogy, this analogy uses three parts, and these three parts make one whole, which in this case is H2O. And these three parts, of course, represent the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Three parts, one whole, which represents God. Three persons, three parts, one God. Be that as it may, unlike the egg analogy, which I said might actually be a perfect analogy if the doctrine of the Trinity was biblical, this analogy is flawed whether the doctrine of the Trinity is biblical or not. This analogy is flawed at face value. However, as fate would have it, this flaw reveals the truth concerning the Godhead and in turn exposes the doctrine of the Trinity as being a false doctrine. So, the $64,000 question is, what is the flaw in this analogy? Well, I'm going to give you a hint. I recently watched a very popular pastor from within the Torah community speaking to his congregation about the Trinity. So, I have put together two clips from that presentation now, I'll tell you right up front, as you will quickly see, I have obscured this gentleman's identity, including his voice, because the last thing I want to do is publicly disagree with one of my brothers. So, let's go ahead and play the clips, and then we'll pick it up from there. We emphatically believe that there is one God. However, we also understand that God manifests as the... You know, he can manifest, he, we understand he's the Father, we understand that he's the Son, we understand that there's the Spirit of God, and how that works together, you know, we may not understand all the mechanics of it, but we still don't believe that there are like three different gods. There's just one. I kind of steer away from the words that men have tried to put on things and the labels that men have tried to put on things like Trinity, even Triunity, and just say that their, their biblical word is there's a Godhead and there is a manifestation of the Creator as Father, as Son, the Spirit of God is real. And so I just kind of leave it at that. 
So with that, there should be two questions. What did my brother say that I disagree with? And how's that going to help us? How's that going to be a hint as to what the flaw is in this analogy? Well, it's rather simple. With all due respect to my brother, what he said was flawed. Although conveniently enough, it's essentially the very same flaw that's contained in this analogy. Now, what's convenient about that? It's much easier to detect the flaw using the analogy rather than using my brother's words. So, what did my brother say that was flawed? He said that God manifested himself in three ways. Now, recognizing that that's the flaw, we need to transfer it over and apply it to this analogy. Now, this analogy doesn't use the words God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It uses H2O, water, ice, and steam. Nonetheless, the template is the same, which in this case would be that H2O manifests itself in three ways, as water, ice, and steam, which again is flawed. It's fundamentally flawed at face value. So, can you detect the flaw in this analogy? If you do, then you will also detect the flaw in the words of my brother and in the doctrine of the Trinity. It's just that simple. So, can you detect the flaw in this analogy? Now, as much as I'd love to continue on and let the cat out of the bag, we are simply out of time in round two. So we're going to have to pick this back up in round three.